Good evening to all who are watching us uh, live streaming by Zoom or YouTube. We want to welcome you to the Pitt County Board of Commissioners meeting for February 1st. I now call the Pitt County Board of Commissioners meeting to order. Madam Clerk. Yes, ma'am. Chairwoman Floyd Huggins. Here. Vice Chair Fitzpatrick. Here. Commissioner Albright. Here. Commissioner Colson. Here. Commissioner McLawhorn. Here. Commissioner Nunnally. Here. Commissioner Ward. Here. Commissioner White. Here. Commissioner Perkins Williams. Here. Everyone is present. Thank you. At this time, we will have invocation by Commissioner Alex Albright and the pledge by Commissioner Mayor Perkins Williams. Let's pray. Dear Lord, we thank you for this day and for your many blessings. We ask that you be with us and those we serve this evening and as we move together into this new year of promise. Amen. Hands over your heart. I pledge allegiance to the flag. Would you repeat with me? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and mine isn't working. For which it stands. Yes, you're working, Mary. All right. Under God. May we start again? I pledge Thank allegiance you. to the flag of the United States of America. And, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have the approval of the agenda. Madam Chairman, oh, okay, I got to raise the hand, okay. And uh, Commissioner White. Yes, ma'am. Um, thank you, Chairwoman. Um, I want to make a motion to approve the agenda with making an amendment to the minutes from last meeting's last month's meeting in January for the item for decision number one um, to reflect a no vote from me. As y'all remember, I was having internet trouble and I was kicked off before the vote. So if we could make that to amend that, I would appreciate it. Uh, Mr. Manager, you about to speak? Yes, Chairman um, Floyd Huggins. I think on the, um, when you do that, when you do the items for consent, if there's any change to the minutes, it would no be normally to pull the, the minutes off the consent item and then have them reflect what Commissioner White is trying to do there rather than at the approval of the agenda. Because this approval agenda deals with tonight's agenda versus the first, but it's up to you. Uh, we will deal with it at the time of minutes. Thank you for that suggestion. Now, would you like to uh, make this, still make the motion to approve the agenda, Commissioner White? Sure, yeah. Yeah, I make a motion to approve. Okay. Uh, Commissioner uh, Perkins Williams. Uh, Madam Chair, I second the motion. Okay, it's been moved and second. Uh, the agenda stands approved. Madam Clerk. Yes, Chairwoman Floyd Huggins. Yes. Vice Chair Fitzpatrick. Yes. Commissioner Albright. Yes. Commissioner Colson. The only thing I'd like to say is that I was trying to raise my hand to be able to ask that the items for decision uh, number one be moved up to after presentations so that we could get uh, Jackie Haddock um, not having the hang on for two hours, if that would not be improper. Well, we already uh, already in the process of voting. Uh, Madam Chair. Okay. Um, I'm in my motion to accept 
Mr. Uh, Coulson's suggestion. <coughs> Um, Madam Attorney, uh, when we already in the process of voting, can we? We ain't voted yet. We're in the process of. Oh. Um, <clears throat> you're in the process of voting. I believe Commissioner White made the motion um, and Commissioner Perkins Williams seconded it. So yeah. I would suggest that you um, proceed with your vote. If someone is not in favor of the motion, they could vote that way. Um, and if um, the motion needs to be made afterwards. You can do that. Well, the only Attorney the only thing I'd like to say, the thing I'd like to say about it, I had my hand raised. I wasn't called on. Uh, this has happened before. These virtual meetings get kind of tangled up, and okay. I don't want to make a big stink about it, but I just feel like there ought to be exceptions sometimes. I mean, I did have my hand up. Well, uh, Commissioner Coulson, I thought your hand was left up from when you. Uh, when you gave the information no. about having that was it was no. never it was never lowered lowered because I, I watched your hand. So that is why I didn't call on you. I just want to say that that's why I didn't call on you. So let's proceed with the with the um voting and then if someone wants to vote against it then yeah. So let's continue with the process. And, and Madam Chair, if I may also, Chairwoman may also say that if a, a second motion needs to be made after this one, there's nothing that prohibits that from happening. Thank you, Madam Attorney. Okay. Commissioner, Commissioner Colson? No. Commissioner McLawhorn? Yes. Commissioner Nunnally? Yes, but maybe a point of clarification. Did not Tom ask for the public addresses to be moved before presentation? I believe we're already there. So I think we're yeah. in good shape. We're in good shape. So your vote? I, I, yeah. Item for decision. Okay. Yes. Commissioner Ward? Yes. Commissioner White? No. Commissioner Perkins Williams. Uh, We're voting. I have no problem with moving it. So if I vote no, I can't offer the motion that we do what Tom wants. It doesn't matter, you know what I mean? So how do I vote, Madam Attorney? I want to be able to. <laughs> I, I can't tell you how to vote, Commissioner Perkins Williams, but I can tell you that if you are not in favor, of a motion to approve the agenda as it is currently ordered, then you would vote no. If you are in favor, then you can vote yes. Neither of those votes would prevent you from making a motion later to rearrange something. Thank you. You you caught me right away. Uh, 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 I approve. Yes. 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 Motion passes seven to two. Thank you, uh, Madam Clerk. Um, yes. Now I see uh, Commissioner Coulson. Okay, then if it's not improper, according to what Jana said, I'd like to make an, a, a motion that we move Jackie Haddock's uh, items for decision number one up to after the public addresses. Uh, this is Commissioner White. I will second that motion. Uh, let's just wait just a minute. What number are we? Are, it's are, it's are, item for decision. I don't, it's uh, number one. That says minutes. This is the Confederate monument item under items for decision as Mr. Colson is referencing. Yeah, my, my concern is that if we may go to eight o'clock and Jackie Haddock is here and why can't we just take care of this if possible and then let him get off and, and go do other things. I hate to ask him to wait two hours. Uh, well, we will, uh, we will put that to a vote. Am I right? Uh, Madam Attorney? Yes, that's correct. You have a motion and a second on the floor, and I don't see any hands up for discussion. So you may proceed uh, to vote. 
Madam Chairman, can I, can I make a suggestion? You do have yes. somebody, on, somebody on public address to the board that I think was going to speak on the matter of the monument. I don't know if the board would want to consider doing this. Letting that we only have one speaker, a Marcus Kerchum Kerchun signed up. And if you wanted to hear that speaker first before you heard the monument issue and then voted or vote first. Okay. Then, then I amend by uh, a motion to be after presentations rather than public addresses. Is that what you're saying? I said after public addresses before. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm, so I'm confused. You're, you're, you're correct, Commissioner Colson. Um, uh, okay. You're good. Uh, sorry, I'm making such a confused mess out of this tonight. You are. Okay. Um, we have a motion on the floor to uh, to move uh, item uh, one under items for decision up to after public address. Is that right? Correct. Yeah. Correct. Okay. Okay. Madam. Uh, uh, Madam Clerk. Yes, ma'am. Chairwoman Floyd Huggins. Yes. Vice Chair Fitzpatrick? Yes. Commissioner Albright? Yes. Commissioner Colson? Yes. Commissioner McLawhorn? Commissioner McLawhorn? Yes. Commissioner Nunnally? Yes. Commissioner Ward? Yes. Commissioner White? Yes. Commissioner Perkins Williams? Yes. Motion passes unanimously. Thank you. All right. So now we will uh, open the floor for a for the public address. Mr. Manager, do we have? Yes, ma'am. We have um, two people signed up. Actually, we have. Um, Jackie, well, Jackie Haddock is on here, but I think he's probably going to be more for the Confederate Monument unless he wanted to speak. Um, we also have Marcus Kerichin. I think um, if you want to take these in the order, um, we do have Mr. Haddock on the, the public addresses list, so I guess we'll recognize him first. Madam Chair, I'll keep your time at three minutes, notify you when that's up. And as we say before all public addresses to the board, Pitt County welcomes all comments on matters of public concern. Please keep all comments respectful. And when you begin to speak, please state your name and address for the board. Okay. Mr. Haddock. <clears throat> yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay, you may speak. Well, um, I really didn't come prepared to speak. I just thought I was uh, to be present, you know, for the vote uh, and, uh, you know, see what the outcome was, et cetera. Um, okay. I, I, you know, you caught me off guard. Uh, hey, let's move on. Oh, but, you know, um, naturally, uh, I'm you know in favor of it and desire the monument to be re-erected. Um, just sorry um, that I wasn't better prepared or aware that you guys were going to want me to have comments or other comments. Well, Mr. Uh, Hatter. Yes, yes ma'am. Thank you for for being here, for being on the call, uh, and uh, we will. Uh, you can stay on and listen for the vote, uh, so you don't have to make a speech if you're not prepared to. But we thank you for for being on the call. Yes, ma'am. Thank you uh, for having me. Okay, Mr. Manager, the next speaker. Yes, ma'am. Next, we have Marcus Kerichin. Mr. Marcus, you on? Yes, can you hear me? Good afternoon. Good evening, everybody. Yes, Marcus Carrington, Aiden, North Carolina. 
But uh, I am the voice representing many, many people from not only the county, the state, and the nation that all feel the same way as I do about the moving of this monument. Um, I, uh, did I hear correctly that you have already voted on it before hearing from the public? No, we have not. Okay, so you did, but then you, I think you changed it, so now you're going to re-vote? We have not voted tonight. Okay, because it sounded like a while ago we all were voting on it. No, we are at the uh, public address uh, part of the meeting. We're okay, because it sounded like a while ago it was uh, sounded like a while ago it had already been voted on. It was a, it was about to pass. Uh, no, no, okay. we were voting. We were voting to amend our agenda, so okay. we could so we could move. Uh, Jackie had it. Uh, okay, I did hear the monument brought up to start off with. That's what got confusing. Yes, I'm sorry. Okay, I'm going to try to keep this as short as possible. As we all know, from even the past meeting in the past before the monument was even moved, very many people are upset, but not enough people are allowed to voice their opinions. They're not even they're not even a public vote that should have been done when taxpayers' money is involved. So this, this monument has been brought down illegally, both by state and federal laws. Therefore, it can't even be put back up where it's supposed to be legally. Nothing fits right. And legal processes can be and will be, if this isn't handled correctly, will be pursued. And, the, and this monument being taken care of as it should be. Not only that, the media is going to be brought involved. Protests are going to be made. It's going to be a big mess. I mean, I really think you guys should think this through before you so fastly pass a vote to do something. That can cause a lot of controversy down the line, especially in the world that we live in today. You see how crazy this world has gotten, how folks have gotten. It could be a, a really bad mess. And it's, it's not even going anywhere where it's anywhere close to where it's come from. So until this matter can be resolved, it's just going to have it. The best thing is probably just keep it hid away where nobody even knows where it is. So it won't be vandalized until we can get this matter settled. It's going to have to be apparently settled into a court of law. So I need to take that consideration. And like I said, I don't only speak for myself. I speak for many, not only in this county, across the state and the nation. And people should have a bigger voice in this than just these small commissioner meetings on a Zoom thing. There's been taxpayers' money to remove this monument. Then you got storage time. Then you've got the money that it's going to take again to re-erect it. Not including, I believe, was a 99-year lease on it. A lot of money coming out of taxpayers' pockets that don't approve. So this needs to be handled a totally different way. I appreciate you guys listening to me, and you guys have a blessed night. Thank you. Thank you, Thanks. sir. Is that the last speaker, Mr. Manager? Scott, you're muted. We did have one other person under um, public addresses, David Byram, but I think he, he'll speak under the um, Eagle Scout recognitions. Okay. All right. So that was the last one? Yes, ma'am. All right. So we'll move now to the um, presentation uh, recognizing Eagle Scouts. Mr. Manager? We, yes, move the other, then, we move the Confederate item next. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Okay, I'm sorry. I wrote it in, but I still. Okay. Uh, we will uh, move to the Pitt County Confederate Monument donation and relocation. And that is going to be uh, Attorney uh, Gallagher and uh, Manager Scott. Elliot. Scott, did you want me to proceed? Yeah, let me just kind of give the introduction and I'll turn it to you, Janice. So as the board is aware, the um, monument was taken down last summer and was put into to storage at an undisclosed location. The um, board agreed for the chairman at the board at that time, um, Commissioner um, Melvin McLaughlin to appoint a committee, which was done. The committee had, had met several times last summer and fall, even into this year and that has brought us to where we are tonight. 
with a recommendation from the committee. And with that, Janice, I'll let you fill in the details as to um, what we're trying to, what, what the recommendation is before the board. Sure. As set forth in your package, um, I just also want to highlight that on June 15th, 2020, the relocation committee was formed. And that include Chairwoman Ann Floyd Huggins, Commissioner Melvin McLawhorn, Commissioner Tom Colson, Commissioner Chris Nunnally, David Denard, Ephraim Smith, Yoshi Newman, and Jerry McCroy. When that committee last met on January 11th, that committee unanimously um, voted to recommend that the Board of Commissioners donate the Confederate monument to the division, to the North Carolina Division of the Sons of the Confederate Veterans Incorporated for the purpose of re-erecting the monument in Pitt County on land owned by Ephraim Smith on NC 43 South in Pitt County, subject to a lease between the sons of the Confederate. That is not true. County. Jerry McCroy did not vote. Effectuate that transfer if the board so desires. North Carolina General Statute 160A280 requires that the governing board publish notice at least five days prior to the adoption of a resolution approving the donation. In your board package, you will see a public notice that's been drafted for your review. You will also see a proposed resolution if um, the board desires to move forward with that plan. Um, if so, uh, the board would need to make a motion to authorize the manager to publish the notice in accordance with 160A280. And then the, pro the proposed resolution would come back to the board for approval on February 15th, if that's the board's desire to follow the recommendation of the committee. Okay, uh, Scott. Okay. Um, we have a, some photos of the site that we'd like to show you, as well as a, a map depicting where the pro proposed location for the monument would go to kind of give a context if our um, PIO can pull those up for us. Maybe show the, the site map first and then go into the photos. This is on N NC43 South, um, obviously southern part of Pitt County on um, former County Commissioner um, Ephraim Smith's property. See more folks are pulling those up. Okay, here we go. This is actually the location and, and this photo would be to the right of it. There's a field, there's some trees. You'll see here in a minute. Um, to, we see the signs there near the kind of the ditch at the, at the road on C43. To the right there, there's a field. I believe there's some trees planted in that field. It's brown looking. I believe that is the, the site location. And if we can pull up the map lastly. Okay. Um, so you see coming down NC 43 South, it's about parallel over to Aden in terms of how far down we are um, into the southern part of Pitt County. This would be on the um, west west side of the road on NC43 as you're traveling NC43 south. So I don't know if Janice had anything else to add, but that's what I have right now. Okay. As, as uh, Attorney uh, Gallagher said that we, the committee was formed and the committee met. And, and this is the report coming back from the committee. Now, I would like to have members of that committee to speak and Commissioner Tom Coulson uh, was on that committee. Commissioner Coulson. Well, I'd, I'd like to uh, say that everybody that was at that meeting, it is a fact that uh, we unanimously voted to go ahead and move it and uh, try to settle this issue once and for all, and I support this. Okay. Thank you. I'm going to call on Commissioner McLaughlin, who was also on that committee. 
Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, as stated by Commissioner Colson, uh, the committee unanimously approved that we move forward in the movement of this monument. And uh, I certainly, at this time, Madam, Madam Chair, would like to make that motion that we are here uh, with the uh, recommendation of the committee that we that we move move forward with this. Thank you. Okay. Commissioner Ward. Yes, uh, Madam Chairman, I would like to second that motion, but I think it's important to say uh, what is written in here that the motion is to proceed with the steps necessary to donate the Pitt County Confederate Monument to the North Carolina Division of the Sons of Confederate Veterans, Inc., uh, authorizing the manager to publish the notice and to bring it back after we have made our vote this time when the resolution is approved. So I second the motion. So noted, uh, Commissioner Ward. Uh, you've heard the uh, motion and it's been moved and second. Um, Madam Clerk. Yes. Chairwoman Floyd Huggins. Yes. Com Vice Chair Fitzpatrick. Yes. Commissioner Albright. Yes, you've got a note up that says the host is not allowing us to unmute ourselves. Please be attentive. I vote yes. Correct. Thank you. Can you allow people to unmute themselves, PIO? Commissioner Colson? Yes. Commissioner McLawhorn? Yeah, yes. Commissioner Nunnally? Yes. Commissioner Ward? Yes. Commissioner White? Yes. Commissioner Perkins Williams. Commissioner Perkins Williams. I do not see her on the call anymore. Does it, am I missing her or is she not there? I don't see her. Here she's dropped off. Okay, motion passes unanimously. Thank you. And we we'll, have will. Minutes, we'll have the minutes reflect that she lost communication and, uh, and her vote will be counted in accordance with your rules. Thank you. All right, I believe we are now ready to go back to the uh, rest of the agenda in, in order. Am I correct? Yes, ma'am. Okay. <laughs> Hopefully we get on track now. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Mr. Manager. Now we're ready for the presentation of scouts. Yes, ma'am. So we have um, about four different Eagle Scouts we will recognize tonight, five actually. And the first one is actually on the Zoom call tonight. We have um, um, David Roosevelt Byram with Troop 911. If um, you'd like to All right. create the board. So we have a certificate for Mr. Byram that is normally awarded in person, but due to this being a virtual environment, we are unable to do that, but we will make sure you get this. And I will um, read the certificate if you would um, be so pleased, Madam Chairwoman. Yes, please. Okay, certificate of appreciation is awarded to David Byram for achieving the Eagle Scout Award. And it's recognized that the um, Boy Scouts of America, that within that organization, there's a very small percentage of young men that actually go on to earn the Eagle Scout Award. And we're proud to say here in Pitt County that the, the number of young men that earn the Eagle Scout Award is two to three times the, the national average. For his project, he constructed and installed several COVID protection petitions at the 4-H Club. And that is noted on his certificate and it is presented by the Pitt County Board of Commissioners on this first day of February, 2021 signed by our chairwoman, Ann Floyd Huggins, and uh, we will make sure that because this is presented to him for um, his keepsake. We also wanted to recognize um, a few other young men. They're not on the call tonight, 
I, Madam Chairwoman, did you want to allow um, Mr. Byram to say anything? Byram? Yes, yes, if he would like to say something. Mr. Byron? Do we still have him on the call? I just like to say thank you. I greatly appreciate it. Great. Well, thank you. We appreciate your attending tonight and um, being here in a virtual manner. Thank you. Thank you. So for the others, we have a certificate for Turner Cook. For his project, he refurbished the Recreation Center at the First Christian Church on 14th Street. We then want to recognize Wade Bullock for his Eagle Scout project. He refurbished the Sensory Riding Trail at the Riding Horse Ranch Therapeutic Center. The next we want to recognize Matthew Hadnot. He constructed and installed a number of sturdy shelf shelving units at the Walcote School. Then our last recognition is to Isaiah per Percy. For his project, he did a major restoration project at the Grifton Pentecostalist Church. So we'd like to congratulate these boys on these, these major accomplishments within the um, Boy Scouts of America, becoming Eagle Scouts. Certainly, we, we say congratulations to all of them. Uh, I believe this is the highest uh, recognition a scout can obtain. Uh, and I know when um, Commissioner McLaughlin was, was chair, he always, um, you know, uh, added that he uh, also is a Eagle Scout. So thank you. Uh, Boyd Huggins, um, yeah. Commissioner McLaughlin does have his hand up and you need a motion for this item. Oh, okay. Uh, Commissioner McLaughlin? Yes. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. That's why I, my hand was up to uh, make a motion that we approve uh, this very special recognition. Commissioner Nunley? Second. It's been moved and second that we approve this recognition and presentation, rather. Uh, Madam Clerk? Yes, ma'am. Chairwoman Floyd Huggins? Yes. Vice Chair Fitzpatrick? Yes. Commissioner Albright? Yes. Commissioner Colson? Yes. Commissioner McLawhorn? Yes. Commissioner Nunnally? Yes. Commissioner Ward? Yes. Commissioner White? Commissioner White. Yes. Commissioner Perkins Williams. Yes. Can you hear me? Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Motion passes unanimously. Thank you. Okay. Uh, uh, Madam Chair, I got locked, kicked off, locked out. And if I didn't make that, I don't know what happened. I was sitting here with my hand in my lap. But uh, I'm still here. I didn't leave for some reason. The computer yes. did that. So, all right. Well, however, the majority voted on with them. Please record me as such. Well, we did. Thank you. It, it was recorded as a yes vote. Thank you for. I'm glad you're back on. We're we're now at public hearing. So I entertain a motion to open the public hearing. Um, and you won't need a motion for that. I you won't can need just go ahead and open it. Just go or ahead. Unless you'd like to hear some remarks from Ms. Andrews first. Yes, okay. I'd recommend you do that. Your remarks from Ms. Andrews? Yeah, yes, ma'am. Okay. I do. Okay, Ms. Kelly Andrews? Yes. Can y'all hear me okay? Yes, we can. All right. Uh, good evening, Madam, Madam Chairwoman and County Commissioners. As as you were previously briefed on this project in December, this public hearing addresses the Development Commission's proposal of an incentive package for Project Piper. This project consists of a company in the chemical product and preparation industry with a projected $9 million investment and 25 full-time jobs with an average salary of $42,000. As our charge is to facilitate industrial and investment and job creation in Pitt County and the understanding that Project Piper 
is competitive with other states under consideration, the proposal includes an economic development grant equal to 50% of the net increase in Avalorm taxes paid by the company over five years with a cap at $125,000 and a match for a building reuse grant not to exceed $25,000. We appreciate your support of this project. Thank you. So are there any other speakers for speaking for that? No, ma'am, nobody has signed up under public addresses for this public hearing. But you'll need to formally open your public hearing and then recognize no one and then close it. If you'll open your public hearing. Okay, I open the public hearing. And again, Madam Chairwoman, there's nobody signed up unless there was somebody on the call that we didn't happen to recognize. Okay. If nobody signed up, so I will close the public hearing for the Economic Development Center. Uh, Commissioner Nunley? Yes, Madam Chair, if it's appropriate, I, I move that we accept the, um, accept the proposal as presented. Okay. Do it. Commissioner Ward? I second that motion. Okay, it's been moved and seconded that we accept, approve that um, presentation, Economic Development Center from Kelly Andrews. Madam Clerk? Chairwoman Floyd Huggins? Yes. Vice Chair Fitzpatrick? Yes. Commissioner Albright? Yes. Commissioner Colson? Yes. Commissioner McLawhorn? Yes. Commissioner Nunnally? Yes. Commissioner Ward? Yes. Commissioner White? Yes. Commissioner Perkins Williams? Yes. Motion passes unanimously. Thank you. We will now move to the second one. Do we have any, um, do we want to have Brian speak first before it or? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Brian? Uh, good evening, uh, Madam Chairwoman and uh, board, board of uh, Commissioners. Um, as pre presented earlier to the board, um, staff has worked with our financial and legal um, outside counsel for, for and to prepare the issuance of limited obligation bonds uh, for A.G. Cox Middle School, the reimbursement of the Warren Farm property, and a new compactor and floor at our solid waste site. Um, as we were preparing the bonds, our financial council um, has notified us that the market is favorable um, for consideration of refunding, or better known as refinancing, of, of, of select bonds that were uh, issued in the past. Um, those bonds are serious 2010 lobs that were for Pitt Community College, uh, a refinance of our 2001 and 2004 B lobs, um, our serious 2012 certificates are participation, um, also known as COPS, um, which was a refinance of our 2004 B COPS and Pitt County School Facilities, our refinance of our 2012 uh, installment financing for our energy saving program, and the uh, 2018 installment financing of the animal shelter uh, renovation project. Um, by taking advantage of these refundings now, uh, we'll save the county significant money uh, in, in terms of reissuance and uh, just on the overall cost, uh, the debt cost, over the next 11 years, we're looking at roughly on average about $109,000 a year in savings if we decide to move forward with our refunding of these particular bonds. In doing so, our bonds, we're gonna break into two different packages for 2021. Now in your agenda, I may have accidentally flip-flopped these but we're gonna break these into two separate bonds. We're gonna have a 2001A and a 2001B. So our 2001A projects are gonna be uh, taxable and our 2001B are tax exempt. So with our tax uh, exempt, I'll start with those first because it's a longer list. Um, this is gonna be A.G. Cox Middle School, the solid waste projects, and the refunding of the 2010 LOBS, the 2012 energy savings, 
and the uh, 2018 financing of the animal shelter project. And then the second bond will be our 2021A, which is taxable. And this will be the reimbursement of the Warren Farm property. And then the 2012 uh, Certificates of Participation, the COPS uh, loan. Um, combined, we're looking at 34 million, roughly $34 million in this live package. And uh, after allowing for the public hearing, the board is asked to consider to consider adopting the attached resolution, making certain findings relative to this proposed transaction. And additionally, you will give us permission to move forward with our application with the local government commission in Raleigh. If, if we move forward, we will meet with our three bond rating agencies in the middle of February. And we will also make sure that the Pitt County uh, Board of Education takes care of their steps that are needed to move this process along. I've also prepared for you all a, a brief presentation explaining the three projects that we have talked mostly about and then uh, one slide that you do have a copy of uh, where I can get these I can get you a copy of if you want the specific details um, of the refunding and refinancing. So I'm going to share my screen. You may need to be able to let there you go. Can you all see it? Yep. Awesome. Yes. All right. So the first slide here is just an overall breakdown of, of the two different series, the 2000, uh, 2001A and 2001B um, that I earlier mentioned. And as you can see on the right-hand screen, you can see the annual debt service starting in fiscal year 2022, um, going into fiscal year 2024. Um, the main collateral is going to be the A.G. Cox Middle School for the entire project. So when we look at just A.G. Cox, uh, as we've talked about, it's roughly, it's close to $12.5 million. It's a 20-year project. We're looking at an average interest rate of 1.91%. Uh, if you look on the right at the chart, you can see our existing debt and our new debt represented by the bar part of the chart. And then if you look at the line, that's our anticipated revenue to pay for this particular uh, portion of the LOBS. Um, this money will come from our restricted Article 40 and 42 sales. So as you can see, our projection, and we have a very, very conservative projection working with our, our financial advisor of just 1% growth. Uh, it's highly unlikely it's gonna be that low uh, historically, our sales tax has, has improved much better than 1%, but just to play it safe, um, that 1% and as debt falls off should be more than significant, sufficient to pay uh, the debt on the A.G. Cox Middle School. The uh, second project that we've talked about, it uh, feels like over a year now, is the um, reimbursement of the Warren Farm Project. Um, originally, the idea was to use um, the... IDC tax, which we did increase to pay for the debt service. Um, that increase on the tax uh, two years ago is more than sufficient to pay the debt over the next 10 years um, with the Warren Farm reimbursement. Uh, we're looking at an interest rate of averaging of 1.66%. Um, at our solid waste site, uh, the third project, the third new project is the compactor and floor. Uh, we are looking at our existing solid waste uh, revenue structure to pay that debt. Um, that current structure is more than sufficient to pay the debt um, at a 1.88% average interest rate over the next 20 years. And then lastly, um, this is a breakdown. I know the font's a little small, um, but I, I would direct your eye really to the far right-hand corner uh, on, on the totals column, but this is a breakdown of the four existing debt packages that we are looking to refund. Um, if you look in that far right hand corner, you will see a uh, million twelve um, is, is the potential savings over the next 11 years. So at, at this, that's why I say it averages out to about $109,000. A year. Um, on the call today, I have uh, Amy Vittner with First Tryon. Amy is our financial advisor. And I have Paul Billows with 
uh, with Wimble, Bond, and Dickinson Paul is our legal counsel on the project. So they are here. If you have any specific questions, um, if, if I, myself, Scott, or Janice is unable to answer, Amy and Paul will gladly jump in. With that, that's uh, it, Madam Chair. Thank you. Thank you, Brian. I see hands up, but do you have questions? Uh, and if there's questions before we open the here the uh, public hearing, Commissioner McLaughlin, do you have a question? No, no Madam Chair, I'd just like to make a motion that we approve uh, of this. Uh, we, both, have both. Have to we have to hearing. open the hearing. Open the hearing first, don't we? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma yeah, we have to open the hearing before we can uh, approve it. That's why I asked do I see hands for Commissioner Colson. Do you have a question? I do have a question. I do have a question. All right, go ahead. Uh, c concerning the Warren Farm and uh, the IDC, uh, with what's going to happen uh, at J July 1st of 2021, uh, the IDC officially is dissolved, is it not? It becomes a department of the a county department. It does, w w does that not also mean that the IDC money, that tax, because it was predicated on on that statute that had been granted in 1958, uh, that money no longer can go there, can it? Right. The, the point I'm uh, uh, oh, sorry, Commissioner Colson. Yeah, yeah. So I'm, I'm confused. How's that? How's it going to? Right, well, are we just going to add that to our regular? Right. Uh, okay. So, so for the budget process for fiscal year 21-22, the idea would be to zero zero out the um, IDC tax. Obviously, you can do that up to three cents. Currently, it's 0.94 cent, a little less than one penny. The idea would be, would be right. to zero that out, and then either to add that to the general fund. Um, tax rate to pay for the expenses going forward. So then that would pay, but, but, pay back this, this one form loan as well as staff and otherwise. Yeah, but will that even exist anymore as an IDC tax? No. It's my understanding that IDC tax was predicated on the, uh, the 1958 agreement. If, that is, if that's dissolved and effectively July 1st. Anyway, I don't want to tie the meeting up. I, I'd like some clarification somewhere in the future. Well, the, I, can, I can say that DC tax, the legislation will still be in existence and you'll just basically be zero. Theoretically, if you go with the recommendation, you'd be zeroing that tax out, adding that portion of it or some portion of it onto the ad valorem tax. The net result would be no tax increase, no difference in the overall tax bills for county taxes. And at some point, if you wanted to or needed to re-implement the IDC tax, you could do that. You'd have to have a board as per the legislation, and you could have that up to three cents. If you had some major economic development project and you just needed to raise a penny, half a penny, two pennies, you know, whatever portion of three pennies, you could always put that back into place. Zeroing it out does not cancel it out from the from Okay, the I just want to make I just want to make certain we didn't leave something on well, go ahead. Commissioner Nunley. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, Brian, thank you for your uh, really hard. I'm sure I can't even imagine how much hard work um, this lobby process is and the entire staff are doing that. But it looks like that because of the environment, uh, the county is set to save about 1. Point, like 1.19, 1. 1.2 million in, in um, I guess, the cost of our debt. Is that correct? So, Commissioner Nunley, um, that the $1.2 million is an estimate of what we could save by refinancing at, at a better interest rate. Um, that number is going to change annually, just depending on the other market variables. But um, for the sake of having this discussion today, um, that's what we've laid out, that a million, uh, $1,200,000 is what we can hope to anticipate. It could be better. Uh, but. Um, Right now, we're looking at about 109,000 over the uh, lifetime of those bonds over the next 11 years, on average. 
Thank you, Carla. Commissioner Ward. Um, in reference to moving our uh, development department over into a department, which is I'm totally in favor of. I think we're on the right track with that. And I know we're not going to do it until this fiscal year is over, but I would assume that we will allot them um, money like we do other departments in the budget relative to, and I assume they will have a board that she will be working with, you know, when uh, all of that is transferred over into the county. So. I think we'll be speaking to that at a later date as to how we organize that and set it up. But I'm just saying that out loud because, I mean, it's very hard to do development without a, <clears throat> a committee or a group because it still has to come to us and we make the final approval. But having a, um, a, a, de a development committee is certainly in place and um, our leader there needs to have that, have a board that she can speak to just like all the rest of our department. So I think we'll deal with that later, but it'll be similar to what, you know, the other departments have. And you have any comments on that? Okay, Commissioner McLaughlin, do you have another comment or are you ready? To, well, I'm gonna need to uh, open the uh, public hearing if there are no more comments. Commissioner McLaughlin? No, I was waiting for you to close the uh, public hearing and uh, then I'll make my recommendation. Uh, okay. The public hearing is now open. Close. Close. Close it down. Okay. You'll have to open it first, then close it. Yeah, I hadn't opened it. <laughs> <laughs> we were just hearing comments from, from Brian and, and whatever. Okay. So it, no uh, speakers for the? No, no ma'am, nobody signed up. Okay, all right, now it is now officially closed. Ma'am, Commissioner McLaughlin, you may make your motion. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, first of all, let me thank uh, uh, Brian Barnett and his, his, his team for such an outstanding job in bringing this to the commissioners. Uh, Madam Chair, I'd like to at this time make a motion that we approve both A and B. Uh, uh, and then that we proceed on with this request of local government commission approval of the financing agreement. Okay. Commissioner Ward. I second his motion. Okay, it's been moved and second that we move ahead with, with this uh, item um, 1A and uh, B, with A and B. Uh, Madam Clerk. Chairwoman Floyd Huggins. Yes. Vice Chair Fitzpatrick? Yes. Commissioner Albright? Yes. Commissioner Colson? Yes. Commissioner McLawhorn? He? Yes. Okay. Commissioner Nunnally? Yes. Commissioner Ward? Yes. Commissioner White? Yes. Commissioner Perkins Williams. Yes. Motion passes unanimously. Mr. Manager, is there a resolution with this or, or not? Yes, there was um, a resolution as part of the, the motion. It should have been part of that entire package. Yeah. Um, yeah. Madam, yeah. Madam Attorney, are you satisfied with all the documents in the motion? Um, yes, I'm, I'm interpreting and believe that Commissioner McLaughlin's motion and the second from Ms. Ward included all that was in your package, which was an attached resolution, continuing the finance process, the submission of an application to the LGC, working with all relevant parties to execute the necessary documents related to the financing agreements. Okay. We're good. Okay, thank you. We'll now move to items for a report. Good evening, Madam Chair, uh, Commissioners, Mandra Elliott. Um, it's good to be with y'all tonight. Um, tonight, I'll bring you the December 2020 tax collection report on the, for the Pitt County fiscal year to date, on um, July 1 through December 31st of, two, of 2020. The combined collection rate for real and personal property was 84.08%. 
on the combined rate one year ago for real and personal property was 81.73%. Uh, Pitt County continues to pursue all outstanding taxes uh, using the remedies that are available to us um, through the North Carolina General Statutes. It is my recommendation that you approve the December 2020 tax collection report as presented. Thank you, sir. Commissioner Ward? Yes, I would like to make a motion to approve the December 2020 tax collection report. Commissioner Nunley? Second. Okay, it's been moved and second that we approve the 2020 tax collection report. Uh, Madam Clerk? Chairwoman Floyd Huggins? Yes. Vice Chair Fitzpatrick? Yes. Commissioner Albright? Yes. Commissioner Colson? Yes. Commissioner McLawhorn? Yes. Commissioner Nunnally? Yes. Commissioner Ward? Yes. Commissioner White? Yes. Commissioner Perkins Williams? Yes. Motion passes unanimously. Thank you. We'll now move to the second item. Uh, I believe, Mr. Groom, you back up with. Uh... Yes, yes, ma'am. Um, Madam Chair, I bring you um, tonight. Um, a report of unpaid taxes for the year 2020 that are lien on real that are liens on real property. Um, North Carolina General Statute 105-369A requires the tax collector to report to the Board of Commissioners annually on the first Monday in February the total amount of unpaid taxes for the current fiscal year that are liens on real property. Um, the report um, we submitted a a report, a preliminary report in um, January, and we sent y'all a new report today updating the totals. The report includes data for the County of Pitt, um, EMS, and the towns of Aden, the town of Bethel, the town of Falkland, the town of Fauville, the city of Greenville, the town of Grimesland, and the village of Simpson. The report we sent you today um, shows there is Three million four hundred forty-five thousand and five hundred thirty-nine dollars that is outstanding um, property taxes that are liens on real property. Um, it is my recommendation that you approve the report as presented. Commissioner Ward. Yes, I'd like to make a motion to uh, approve the report as presented. Commissioner Nunley. Second. It's been moved and seconded that we approve the report as presented. Madam Clerk. Chairwoman Floyd Huggins. Yes. Vice Chair Fitzpatrick. Yes. Commissioner Albright. Yes. Commissioner Colson. Yes. Commissioner McLawhorn. Yes. Commissioner Nunnally. Yes. Commissioner Ward. Yes. Commissioner White. Yes. Commissioner Perkins Williams. Yes. Motion passes unanimously. Thank you. Commissioner Ward, your hand is still up. Do you have a no, ma'am. question? All right, thank you. You use it. Somebody usually takes it down, but I'll. <laughs> okay. All right, just want to make sure. Uh, we'll move to the uh, fourth item. Uh, I'm sorry, the third item is the uh, monthly financial report uh, for the solid waste coming from Brian on the EMS funds. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, good evening again. Um, you have in front of you your December 31st uh, financial report for the general fund, the solid waste fund, and the EMS fund. Um, on the, uh, we are at the 50%. We're halfway through the year um, on our fiscal year. On the general fund side, we have collected 61.1% of our anticipated revenues, and we have spent 46.7% of our anticipated expenses. Um, we are tracking much better this December than we were last December on the general fund. Um, a lot of that is due to the fact of the war farm property, which we talked about a few minutes ago. And also just want to point out that from a halfway through the year standpoint, um, overall financially, uh, we are in incredibly great shape. Uh, we hope that the, we can duplicate this on the second half and finish the year strong. Um, on the solid waste side, we have collected 68.3% of our anticipated revenues and only spent 42.89% of our expenses. On the EMS side, we have collected 69.21% and only spent 
uh, 96% of our expenses. Uh, if you have any questions, I'll be more than happy to answer. Any questions? Uh, and, uh, Commissioner Perkins Williams? Madam Chairman, I move that we accept the report as presented. Commissioner Ward? I second the motion. It's been moved and second that we approve the report as presented. Madam Clerk. Chairwoman Floyd Huggins. Yes. Vice Chair Fitzpatrick. Yes. Commissioner Albright. Yes. Commissioner Colson. Yes. Commissioner McLawhorn. Yes. Commissioner Nunnally. Yes. Commissioner Ward. Yes. Commissioner White. Yes. Commissioner Perkins Williams. Yes. Motion passes unanimously. Thank you. <laughs> and then we will move to um, the fourth item, which is public health um, director's report. Um, he's going to give us an update on the community vaccination program. Uh, Dr. Silvanair. Good evening, Madam Chair. Nice Good to evening. See you the, nice to see you and the other commissioners this evening. Uh, permit me to share my screen. And minimize. There we go. Well, <clears throat> I want to start out by, by telling you all that vaccine supply remains very limited. Uh, vaccine demand remains greater than vaccine supply. When North Carolina opened vaccination to individuals 75 and older, Pitt County Health Department had about 600 doses uh, for more than 9,500 eligible individuals. Um, so obviously very short of, of what our potential candidates are. When uh, the opening uh, of vaccination was extended to 65 uh, year old folks and older, uh, that added about 16,000 more eligible vaccine candidates without an increase in our available vaccine supply. Our operations to date, um, provided vaccine is available, we have been holding vaccine clinics four to five days per week at the health department. Uh, these consist of both first and booster doses. Uh, we have tried to consolidate some of our booster dose clinics. <laughs> are able, they run a little bit faster and this allows us to get more people through. Uh, on Saturday, this past Saturday, the 30th of uh, January, uh, we hosted a vaccination clinic uh, where we vaccinated uh, 240 individuals from historically marginalized uh, populations. Uh, my director, uh, nursing director, Dr. Kimberly Hardy, and I'm sorry, I have a little frog in my throat this evening. Um, my uh, nursing director, Dr. Kimberly Hardy, worked with uh, local groups to get that set up. So a shout out to uh, Dr. Hardy on that one. <clears throat> We've had a number of mobile vaccine efforts. Um, uh, we knew there was an, a need to get our Pitt County EMS community vaccinated. Uh, special thanks to Dr. Robert Portella, Jim MacArthur, our senior paramedic, and Randy Gentry for their assistance in vac vaccinating Pitt County EMS providers. Uh, Dr. Portella and Jim MacArthur have been out around the county doing a series of off-site clinics for us from the health department's perspective to reach um, our county EMS personnel. They've been out to Farmville, they've been down to, to um, Winterville, they've been to um, Grifton, uh, I think not Grifton, um, Simpson, they were in Simpson. Uh, Jim and, Jim and uh, Dr. Portella have been, been bouncing around the county doing some of these clinics for us to kind of hit the, the north and the west and the south and the east of the county. <clears throat> in conjunction with um, East Carolina University, we've developed another mobile vaccine team program. Um, in the breakdown of long-term care facilities or congregate living facilities, 40 of these facilities not covered by the federal program were assigned to Pitt County Health Department for vaccination. Obtaining consent and medical review of these individuals is a slow and tedious process. This has slowed this work down considerably. Uh, we do continue to work with these facilities to date, um, this project, the um, uh, Pitt County Health Department ECU mobile team has vaccinated three of these facilities, just under 100 folks between the three facilities. So not quite half of what, um, uh, of what we've been assigned in terms of beds, uh, but we've also booked out their boosters uh, with this team as well. So their boosters will happen um, when the time comes for that. This process seems to work pretty well. The team is, is getting comfortable taking vaccine out to a site and doing the work. 
uh, we see we may be able to use this for other facilities or other operations as we continue to move through the vaccination process here in Cook County. Our general public clinics, um, to date, we've held three large scale general public um, clinics for COVID-19 vaccinations. These were all done at the Pitt County Agricultural Center. Each of these clinics vaccinated 230 eligible Pitt County residents. Um, please say I personally worked the medical screening station at all of these clinics and, and was very pri privileged to meet many of our um, more senior, more mature residents in person uh, working the clinics. Um, uh, these individuals were pre-booked for booster appointments, uh, so they will come back to the Ag Center to receive their uh, booster dose at the appropriate interval, and those clinics will begin next Monday for the booster doses. <clears throat> the joint Vidant Pitt County site um, at the Greenville Convention Center. <clears throat> um, Vidant Health has received uh, greater amounts of vaccine than, than the health department has. Both parties were seeking a larger venue in which to conduct vaccinations. A series of weekly coordination calls began on Tuesday, uh, December 29th to discuss some um, uh, vaccine efforts to, to make sure we were serving the community uh, in, in the best possible fashion. Um, discussions began, which ultimately led to the opening of the Greenville Convention Center as a mass vaccination site. The site went live on Saturday the 23rd, very soft opening with a few hundred people booked uh, to kind of test the mechanisms. Its official opening was on the 25th of January um, last Monday. <coughs> and again, I apologize for this frog in my throat tonight. At present, the site is vaccinating more than a thousand individuals per day. An increase in capacity has been considered as part of the planning so that first doses and booster doses can be given when, when we hit that mark. Uh, because if you're given a, a hundred doses today, when you hit the booster interval, you got to be able to give 200 doses a day. So, so we're looking at, um, at, at that capacity being able to be increased at the appropriate interval so that um, we can continue to give first doses and booster doses provided vaccine is available. Uh, the site is currently providing Pfizer uh, COVID-19 vaccine to eligible individuals. This is what Biden had in stock and what the state seemed to have easier access to. So at least in the short term, it will continue to be a, a Pfizer driven clinic. Um, at present, the site is expected to remain open through the end of May, 2021. The site operates, uh, will operate as vaccine is available. <clears throat> Hours of operation may vary due to vaccine availability. This week, the clinic will operate from Thursday through Sunday. This is in response to changes made in the federal and state allocation process, uh, which guarantee a baseline uh, allocation of first doses, and then uh, 90 plus percent of those need to be out of the freezer by the following Monday to begin the next allocation cycle. Scheduling, individuals who are pre-registered, and we did pre-register in excess of 9,000 individuals uh, with Pitt County are being called and scheduled for the vaccination um, at the Greenville Convention Center. Uh, at last count, we were down to just a few hundred who had not been scheduled. Uh, we have had trouble contacting some of the individuals on the list, uh, but continue to try. Uh, every individual will, be, have, will have been called uh, more than twice before we give up on that individual. Uh, we did find as we went through this that some individuals went through the Vidant self-scheduling system and were able to schedule themselves through the Vidant platform uh, when it opened. So there was a process of deduplication uh, between our list and Vidant's list. Moving forward, we will be integrating the scheduling platform to create one scheduling system uh, with multiple options to schedule that will include a telephone option an option through my chart if you subscribe to my chart through the Vidant uh, Epic electronic health record and an online registration, excuse me, online registration platform. Mm -hmm. Bottom line through this past Saturday, the health department has vaccinated 3,221 eligible individuals in Pitt County. Our weekly base allotment for the next three weeks beginning today is 200 first doses. We expect to receive those later this week. Uh, we are currently deferring some first dose um, vaccinations until we receive that allotments. Booster allocations are still promised to match the first dose allocations. Special event vaccine may be available by request um, to do certain groups, um, especially the historically marginalized populations. But pleased to tell you that at this point, no doses have been wasted. Um, so we've always been able to find a, a home for doses uh, and have not wasted any. And if you look at the state website across Pitt County, 20,634 first and second doses have been administered. Uh, 17,000 plus of those are first doses with about 3,000 
3,000 and change uh, booster doses having been given. So that's I think that's a, a number that should make us all feel feel better tonight uh, um, in terms of how much vaccine has been given in the county. Special concerns, we recognize the, the need to get the county sheriff's office vaccinated to work with our, our school district to get uh, Pitt County school employees and faculty vaccinated. Uh, there are several other law enforcement agencies in the county. Our transit providers, including PGV, are, are looking for vaccination. And then we have our non-EMS providing firefighters who are also um, um, in need of vaccination. All of these agencies and anyone who would otherwise fall into the designation of essential uh, worker uh, are part of what the state is now calling group three. And at this time, the uh, North Carolina Department of Health and Human Services has not approved group three for vaccination. Um, but we are coordinating with these groups so that we have lists developed uh, for these groups. And when vaccine is available and when the approval is given, uh, we can move to schedule those individuals for vaccination through the health department. The COVID vaccine management system, otherwise known as CVMS, um, um, we have struggled with this as has most every other vaccine provider. By week's end, uh, if not before, we anticipate that all of our vaccination data will be in CVMS. We learned um, a process from Vidant um, where they were, they're working in Epic at the joint site and then creating a report in Epic and then using that report to populate CVMS. We are gonna mirror that on our end, so we will soon begin to use EPIC, our electronic health record too, uh, to record the vaccinations. That does two things, it gets it in the, the patient's chart, um, and then it also allows us to generate a report of that vaccine activity. And then that data will be manually, and I stress manually transferred to CVMS. There is no electronic push of data from our electronic record to the COVID vaccine management system. This has to be manually keyed into CVMS. At one point, we were manually entering data into three different systems. Um, we had the CVMS system. Uh, we were entering data into the North Carolina Immunization Registry, or NCIR, and then into our own electronic health record. Uh, this was based on some con conflicting information from the state. Uh, the state had advised health directors that if you put it in CVMS, they would migrate it to NCIR. I have confirmed this with the state, and the state assures me they will migrate data from CVMS to NCIR, thereby eliminating that step in our data management uh, cascade. Pitt County COVID-19 data, I wanna briefly review the data with you. I know mostly you were interested in the, the vaccine information. This is kind of a snapshot of where we were last week. Um, we were at about 112 cases a day, 112.5 cases per day. We we're at 8.5 cases per thousand. Uh, our total cases were approaching 15,000 or about 8% of the Pitt County, Pitt County population. And we were estimating that 13,000 and change uh, or 86% of our cases had recovered. We had accumulated 70 deaths. And our case fatality rate had dropped again to 0 0.5 and was trending down in the unrounded numbers uh, that has ranged from 0 0.5 to 0 0.7. Um, our percentage of testing uh, was still north of 10% last week. We were at 10.8%. 10 uh, when I prepared those numbers for my press conference on Wednesday last week, uh, that was down um, nearly three points from the, the high of 13.6% uh, where it had been most recently. As of about noon today, over the past 14 days, we, we've accumulated 1,417 cases. That's 101.2 cases per day. So down significantly um, from last week. Our active cases per thousand, that's the 1417 divided by um, 85, uh, 185,000 estimated Pitt County residents is down to 7.7 .7 cases per, um, per thousand in the county. In quieter times, that number was closer to three. So we're still more than twice where we were in the quieter times of, of this pandemic. Our total cases today are in excess of 15,000, 15,450. That represents about 8.4% of Pitt County residents our estimated recovery has actually risen a little bit since last week um, in terms of a percentage. We're at 13,962 estimated recovered, and that represents about 90.4% of cases um, here in the county. We have sadly added one, one other fatality since last week. Um, and again, I extend my, my condolences to the family and friends of that individual. Our case fatality rate is at 0.5, again, in the unrounded numbers 
uh, still trending downward in the unrounded numbers, uh, which is a good thing. And our percentage of positivity has continued to fall and we are down to 9.9%, so just under 10% as of, as of earlier today. So our numbers, our numbers are improving uh, overall on the county here. Wanted to show you this chart. This is um, a weekly surveillance summary I get from Vidant Health uh, that looks at virus, uh, viruses, respiratory viruses circulating in the community. And as I mentioned before, there were some characters missing in action and that's most notably something called RSV, which usually comes around the beginning of November and last through December. We've had no RSV reported through the hospital lab this year. And influenza, both influenza A and B, we've only had, this is that darker blue line, we've only had two cases, two positive PCR tests for influenza A uh, through the Vidant Hospital uh, Laboratory um, this flu season. So at least from a, a viral ecology standpoint, it appears somewhat that COVID has supplanted influenza this season. It's not to say that there isn't influenza out there or, or that it's not circulating in the community. It's just circulating apparently at very, very low levels because we're not picking it up in our, our normal surveillance. The rest of this tower is rhinovirus or enterovirus, which are typically uh, cold viruses. Enteroviruses also cause some GI syndromes and then adenovirus, which also causes cold syndromes in folks. And I wanted to pull the, the flu, flu surveillance curve for you all tonight, but I could not harvest that from the state website. If you look at a normal year's flu surveillance curve, what we're seeing develop for our COVID surveillance curve this year they superimpose very, very well. You can take that COVID curve and put it over um, the seasons of flu curves and you can see that COVID really has kind of supplanted influenza as the primary circulating respiratory virus this season. I mean, uh, if you, um, if it pleased the commissioners, I'm happy to, um, to show you the, um, the state website, uh, walk you through the data dashboard. If you would rather dispense with that, I, I made that an optional um, item for you all tonight. We'll dispense with that. Okay, happy to take any questions you or the other commissioners might have, Madam Chair. Thank you. Do we have questions for Dr. Sivanir? I don't see any hands, Dr. Sivanir. So I'm shocked. <laughs> <laughs> thank, thank you, and, and we want to say continue um, the um, the good work uh, with uh, your. Um, department and also with um, pardoning with Biden. So please, we've, we've heard some good reports uh, from the citizens on getting their, um, their vac vaccination. Thank you, ma'am. We, we understand that the door to door time at the, at the convention center is about 30 minutes okay. uh, with, the, with the appointments and uh, you know, on average. So that, that's very good. That's, that's good, so, okay, you thank you. Have, you don't have to have a, an appointment to do that though, do you? Yes, it's, it's, yes. yes, Commissioner, it's by appointment only. Okay, no other comments. Thank you again. Thank you, Madam Chair. We'll move to the uh, manager's report. Thank you, Madam Chairwoman. So next meeting dates, February 15th will be your next meeting at 6 p.m. Then we move to March 1st at 6 p.m. I want to remind the board of the NACO Legislative Conference coming up in March. Um, normally you'd go through your rotation of the commissioners who could go to that, but since it is virtual, um, all the commissioners are being invited to attend. And if you haven't already done so, if you'll let the clerk know, she'll be happy to set you up. We say it's March 8th through 26th. It actually spans the 8th through the 12th, the 17th through the 19th, and the 24th through the 26th. So there's a, about three, three different sets of, of dates in the month of March that that virtual conference will take place. Wanted to also recognize we received a letter, the board received a letter from a citizen from Virginia Branch and the chairwoman just wanted me just to mention some of the things that she was mentioning there. She was requesting that our local, our local and state governments to support the medical community um, in terms of improving safety in the community and functional communication in business and, and local and state government. We just want to recognize her for reaching out to the commissioners and providing a handwritten letter and expressing her, her thoughts and um, things that were needed. Also wanted to uh, mention to the board, um, I think this was emailed to you and will be in your 
uh, printed weekly info packet. The Mideast Commission is um, accepting applications for what they're calling a COVID-19 micro loan assistance application. And this is to help finance existing local small businesses th throughout our five county region to help them recover from COVID-19. Says um, eligible businesses should be in should be small businesses in Beaufort, um, Bertie, Hereford, Martin, and Pitt counties. Says documentation providing an evidence of loss in revenue since the start of COVID-19 pandemic is strongly suggested, and you may apply for 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 between ten and fifty thousand dollars in an interest-free loan. And um, if you will um, contact um, my office or um, the development commission, we can give you the, the information on an application for this. And the last topic I just wanted to um, bring to the board's attention, you may have heard some of this, um, but we're having some backlog issues within environmental health in terms of more on the um, soil scientist side of getting um, 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 lots evaluated for septic systems. We've got a housing boom. We've got um, a few positions that they're still trying to recruit for. They have a new hire that came in today. We're working with them, working with Dr. Silvernail to look at all options, whether it's hiring back um, retired employees who might, who might be willing to come and work on that basis, um, other part-time staff, staff from other counties, um, a program called the Alliance, which used to be in place with the state, which was a state na network of retired environmental health employees. Just, we're checking to see if that is still in place, trying to look under every rock to get people in here, even offering our own staff um, comp time or, or paid overtime. We've done this in the past during other housing booms, but if you hear anything about this, just know we're looking at this, working with Dr. Silvernail and his staff trying to address the needs in that, that area of environmental health. With that, Madam Chairwoman, that's all I have. Thank you, Mr. Manager and uh, Commissioner Ward, I see your hand. Yes, I'd like to make a motion that we accept the items for consent. Uh, Madam Chairwoman, I know at the very beginning of the meeting you had a request from Commissioner White to pull the minutes. Just want to respect her comment at the very beginning of the meeting. Uh, Commissioner White. Thank you, Chairwoman Huggins and Scott. Um, yes, um, as y'all know, my internet was giving me trouble last um, during our last meeting, so I would respectfully ask that the minutes be amended to reflect a no vote since I was not properly excused from the meeting for item one under decision from the last meeting. Um, motion. Madam, Madam Attorney, I need directions. Right, you have a motion on the floor to accept the items for consent that does not yet have a second. Um, I'm not sure if Commissioner White is making a um, substitute motion to pull the item, the minutes from that meeting off the items for consent, in which case, if that's what she's doing, then she would need a second for that. You'd approve your items for consent, and then you could address the minutes. Yes, Madam okay. Attorney, I would like to make a substitute motion. And actually, since the first motion didn't get a second, we can actually just call that a motion. Thank you. My hand was raised. Yes, uh, I, I believe uh, Nunley was uh, first. Thank you, Madam Chair. I'll second um, Ms. White's motion to pull the minutes from the consent agenda and for approval of the consent agenda. Okay. It's been moved and second that we um, pull that. But before that, um, Commissioner Coulson, do you have? Uh, no, I was going to. I was going to second it. Okay. Madam Clerk. Yes, Chairwoman Floyd Huggins. Yes. Vice Chair Fitzpatrick. Yes. Commissioner Albright. Yes. Commissioner Coulson. Yes. Commissioner McLawhorn. Yes. Commissioner Nunnally. Yes. Commissioner Ward. Yes. Commissioner White. Yes. Commissioner Perkins Williams. Yes. Motion passes unanimously. Thank you. 
Mayor, I'm out of chair. We, Mayor, we need a motion there to um, to accept the uh, consent uh, agenda with with those uh, corrections. Is that right? My understanding was that the consent agenda was approved without the minutes on it. So now you just need to address what was pulled from the consent agenda, which is the minutes. Okay. All right. I entertain a motion. Uh, Commissioner Nunley. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, and Madam Attorney, if it's appropriate pursuant to our rules, I, I move that um, Commissioner White be afforded the opportunity to amend um, vote um, that she requested um, at the previous meeting where she was removed due to a technology issue um, and that we approve the minute um, con uh, for that item um, thereafter. I'd like to second that, Madam Chair. Okay, it's been moved and second. Um, I have, before I carry that motion, I have some hands. I want to see if they have any comments or questions. Uh, Commissioner Albright. Uh, no, no, I'm I'm trying to lower my hand. I've lost it. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> okay, okay, Commissioner Commissioner Colson, do you have a question? No, I've got a second. Okay. All right. It's been moved and second. Uh, Madam Clerk. Yes. Chairwoman Floyd Huggins. Yes. Vice Chair Fitzpatrick. Yes. Commissioner Albright. Yes. Commissioner Colson. Yes. Commissioner McLawhorn. Yes. Commissioner Nunnally. Yes. Yes. Commis Commissioner Ward. Yes. Commissioner White. Yes. Commissioner Perkins Williams. Yes. Motion passes unanimously. Thank you. But just for the record, um, I will amend those minutes and then bring them back for adoption um, at the next meeting. Thank you. That's wonderful. Um, we are now at the items for discussion. I believe is where we are. And um, Scott, we have on the item uh, suddenly communication. Would you like to be happy to open it up and then turn it over to Commissioner White. So the last meeting we had a request from Commissioner White to um, for her to work with staff to draft a letter for consideration of the board to send to the Attorney General regarding Suddenlink service. We um, looked at a number of different letters that had already been submitted by other um, counties and municipalities and worked with Commissioner White to draft the letter for you. So with that, I'll defer to Commissioner White for further comments. Okay, Commissioner White. Thank you. Um, yes, in my time on the board, one of the biggest complaints I have received from citizens is not just a lack of internet in certain areas in the county, but very poor service, particularly from Suddenlink. Um, and some ideas were shared with me by people that other counties and cities have been sending in a, a letter to the Attorney General um, after doing some thinking, I would like to propose that we have a public hearing and we advertise this to everyone that way their complaints are on record and we invite, invite Suddenlink to attend the public hearing. Um, and that would be a good first step before sending a letter to the attorney general. I know a lot of other, um, counties and municipalities have already done that, um, but I think a public hearing would be a good idea. Um, and I'm open to any thoughts and suggestions. I did talk to Commissioner Perkins Williams on Friday, I believe. And um, when I said that Suddenlink had service that was, I can't remember the word I used, not that great. She said that their service was bad. So Anyway, I think this will be a good first step, and I would hope that I would get the support of the board to proceed with the public hearing in the future. Commissioner Nunley. Thank you, Madam Chair. And let me first say that connectivity and the, the provision that every resident in Pitt County um, receive internet connectivity at a broadband level 
Um, I think this commission's made very clear that that is a priority and our team has um, continued to work and I'm thankful for our team for continuing to work at trying to secure um, increased connectivity for our residents. And that's a, that's a really concern and in, in, in light of COVID um, with the stress on education and virtual learning um, and professional life with, with virtual meetings, um, it's, it's no longer a, it's no longer an option to have strong connectivity. It's in fact, you know, um, it's, it's a really a requirement. So I want to commend our team for working on that. And we do have a number of um, providers of internet service, sort of vendors of internet um, that are looking to enter the market in Pitt County. Um, we've had discussions about that over the last, um, last couple of months. And I guess my concern with addressing one or another has to do with in, in any public forum that we're sponsoring has to do with mainly a concern that one, we're not the body that's tasked with, with oversight of, of cable franchise providers um, in, in the region, um, not rest with the state. Um, and, and we're also not a judicial body. Um, we're a legislative body. Um, and, and so I fear that any, any step that we would take uh, to, to hold uh, hearings on purported customer complaints where we don't have legal standing uh, to bring these complaints on behalf of the individual, um, I think is, is somewhat problematic. And then there's the, the third issue that I really see with, and I think this is the one where we need to tread very lightly, is that um, the market ought to, ought to self-correct as long as we're doing our job as a government, making sure that we're providing, we're providing an environment whereby vendors can access um, and enter our in, in our region. Um, I think market dynamics are a better place uh, for us to influence um, behavior, and um, I don't think that a government entity ought to be in the position of advocating for or against a particular provider. Um, certainly standing with the con end consumer with making sure that, that providers are not breaking the law um, and that they're doing what they've set out to do. Um, of course, but that group that does that is, is rest with the state right now. And in light of that, I feel like there are more, more issues with us getting involved and particularly, oh, man. I guess, hurting the market um, and interfering with the market where we've got, we've got competitors in the market right now. Um, so I, I just, I just, I would, if, from my perspective, sitting an attorney, we, if, if we don't have any real evidence of, of major consumer fraud and major market improprieties, I think that we need to do what we can do to assess our, uh, assist our constituents with finding the right avenues to get them addressed through the proper uh, remedies and continue to do that. But as a body, I don't think that we should be actively participating with advocating for or against any co private company. Okay. Commissioner Nunley, since you said legal, I'm going to call on our uh, attorney to speak to the legality of it. Um, thanks, Madam Chairman. You mean the legality as to our authority? Yes. Okay, so um, many years ago, um, the local governments, counties used to franchise cable and internet providers. Um, we no longer do that. That is now solely within the jurisdiction of the state. Um, and the Attorney General's office um, on their website has a consumer protection division with an online link and a toll free telephone number that citizens who are concerned about their cable or internet service can call the Consumer Protection Division within um, the Attorney General's office. Yeah, there are certain issues other than consumer fraud issues that can be referred to the Federal Communications Commission as they relate to internet or cable services. There is no local authority that I'm aware of um, to exercise control or jurisdiction over an internet or cable provider. Okay, thank you. I'm now going to go to uh, Commissioner Ward. Uh, yes, um, I'd like to say first that 
I know the frustration and uh, we all kind of feel it. And I know that there are certain places in the county that it's very, very difficult to uh, get good service. But with that said, and if we were listening to what Chris said and what Janice said, I don't think that there's anything as commissioners that we can do. Um, and I, I really would hope that we would not pursue that and certainly not a public hearing. So um, I'm leaning in that direction. Okay, Commissioner Perkins Williams. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I heard um, Chris Nunnally and I heard Attorney Janice Gallagher mention to uh, uh, consumer fraud. And what, since we are discussing this so that our residents can hear it, could you tell me, uh, both of you, what you consider consumer fraud is? You're asking me, consumer fraud would be a misrepresentation by an entity um, in dealing with its consumers. And Ms. Commissioner Perkins Williams, you um, actually, I think, shared with the board a letter that you had received, if I'm not mistaken, that was the response from um, the Attorney General's office to Sudden Link, where they acknowledged the letters from the other counties. And in that letter, they indicated that their jurisdiction is in over consumer fraud. They invited Sudden Link to a meeting with them to further investigate those issues. And so I think from the perspective of the letter and the perspective of consumer fraud, um, I know that Commissioner White had attempted to bring this item earlier and at such time might have been on the front end of the letter joining other counties that was then accepted by the Attorney General's office. Um, but I think your best description of consumer fraud would be in that letter. You agree with that, Attorney um, Nani? Um, Madam, Madam Chair, if I may. Um, yes, thank go you, ahead. Thank you, Commissioner Perkins Williams. Um, so mine, mine really had to do with not the question of what consumer fraud is, but rather that we're not the body that ought to, 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 to handle the judgment of that, um, that we are really a legislative body setting policy, um, setting policy on the ground uh, to try to create hopefully the best best service for our, our constituents, um, but that that's provided by private market, the private market, but that we not step into the role of judge and jury on what companies are doing um, in, in, in our role. Right, there, there are folks that are that are appointed and elected to do that. Um, it's my opinion that we are not appointed and elected to do that. Um, thank, thank, thank you, both of you. Uh, I do know that different same profession may have a a lighter view or a different view about uh, terminology and definition, but as a consumer and as a resident. I've used two broad companies that supplies internet services to constituency. My, my number one, we have more than just two in this county and they are all not accessible throughout the county. So those of you who have the privilege and opportunity of selecting a different services uh, has a, 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 a wider perspective to choose from. Now in business and in business uh, studies, and st competition is something that will cause a company to provide a great customer service. And so far, none of the companies, uh, the, the uh, services that are provided in the rural, uh, particularly over here where I am, great con uh, consumer services. So um, even when Spectrum came here, I'm bringing up a new one, uh, and I called, they said that they were not, and I, 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 I can almost spit in the city. They said they were not providing services to this area at all. So 
it's a greater problem with internet services. And it's not good when you, uh, when you don't have strong competition, period. Then you lean more towards the other way, which is not supposed to be um, something that we can uh, say we have here. I would like to see, because now I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't take your vision, Nunnally, because I'm not a, a, an attorney. I'm an end user of services. So what I'm saying is, if people, a large group of people in this county are complaining, we should have some as a body of rules. That's who we are. We are rules. We don't follow all of our own as a body of rules and as a, as a body of policy, there should be something that we can express by as a body. And I do agree with Lauren. That's one of the biggest things I've heard as well as for as throughout the county, not just over here, but everywhere. People are not happy. You spend money. Number one, you can't budget when the the bill constantly change. And when you have a service like that, the bill should be the same when you're not asking for any new access to something that they offer. So that's that's my biggest problem, uh, is their billing and services like that. And when it rains, you can forget getting on internet. I don't know why I got kicked off today. And, and then of course, I guess uh, the person who's sitting on, the county's in had to allow me in and he didn't, I guess he didn't realize I was off and couldn't get back in. So I had to wait till somebody saw that I was locked out. But there should be something. And I'm for having a discussion. Now, Lauren, I agree with you, but to me, hearing is a sort of strong word. Uh, discussion and a conversation with people in Southern Link, I like to see do because they are providing, I understand, a good service in a in the northern part of this county, and I would hate for us to. Some people out here don't have any internet service and can't get it because their home happened to be located on the wrong spot. So that's that's out there. So if we can do some of that as a group, then maybe we should talk about it. If we talk about it, because we don't listen to each other's conversation anyway. So I like to see us talk about it. Uh, there are counties all around us, uh, Mr. Manager, that are talking about it, doing something about it, Edgecombe, Beaufort, all around us, they're doing something about it. And I don't know why we have to be tight-lipped on having a conversation about an issue that our residents um, bring to us or lay in front of us and constantly discuss with us. That's my feeling. And if we're going to talk about it, I'm ready. And I have kept a strong folder of all of my bills. And I have made notes every time I call. But if you have to sit on a call waiting for somebody to answer you two hours and a half, and I've done that, there is a serious customer service uh, problem with the business provider. And I'm thinking that maybe they don't know that the customer service is that bad. And you can't get to a manager. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Perkins Williams. Uh, I'm going to go to uh, Commissioner McLaughlin because he has not uh spoken yeah commissioner mclaughlin thank you madam chair uh what i understand there is uh, problems with southern link and, and I've, I've gotten reports on that uh services of southern link but after listening to uh our attorney Gallag gallagher and, uh, and uh, uh commissioner nunley we, we we have but such a fine line to deal with and uh in certain areas, uh, we just don't have the authority to uh, to to challenge. So, with that said, Madam Ch uh, Madam Chair, I, I think that we uh, are proceeding the way that we've been 
on the on on the right course. Uh, this may not be the proper time to try to deal with this because of the uh, areas that is is pertaining to. But again, uh, in, in in comment somewhat to what Commissioner Perkins mentioned, and also uh, what uh, Lauren White is alleging, that the, I, I agree that there, there are some problems with Southern Lake, but I don't think these are the ones that we should be uh, dealing with at this time. Thank you. Okay, I'm going to go around um, one more time, Commissioner White. Thank you. Um... I understand that our authority is to influence, that our authority to influence in this situation is limited, but I feel strongly that we should can address the concerns of our constituents and the citizens of Pitt County by providing an opportunity to share, for citizens to share their concerns with Southern Link representatives present. This might create an opportunity for solutions. Um, we need to work toward a solution rather than just telling everybody in the county that it's not our responsibility. This doesn't fall um, on our plate. And if a public hearing, if, if that is not supported, then maybe we could just go ahead and send a letter to the attorney general like other cities and counties have done. Um, I, I was thinking that maybe a public hearing would be a good first step and kind of um, Given, giving Sudden Link a time to hear these um, concerns personally. Um, but if y'all don't agree with the public hearing, then maybe you would support sending a letter. Um, like I said, I understand that local government isn't in control of internet providers, and I'm not saying that we should be telling them where they have to provide internet but simply addressing the concerns of people that live in the county for their poor service, their lack of service, when they are paying Sudden Link for this service. Thank you, Commissioner White. Uh, Commissioner Ward. Um, I, I, maybe the attorney can help us with an idea about a letter or and where we may just relate what some of our citizens have shared with us, or if there is another way that, or someone else that we could um, get involved with this. I'm not sure. I know, I know what we're saying is that it's not our responsibility, but it is very aggravating. We, um, once you cross the railroad track coming out of Bethel going to uh, Robinsonville, there's absolutely no coverage over there, period, at all. And uh, everybody's got antennas and whatever else they have to have. Uh, but that's not just the only place in the county. It's the outlying areas. So um, I think that we all feel the same way. It's not on our plate, but, you know, maybe a letter. Uh, maybe we could get someone to work with Janice and maybe come up with a letter and bring it back at our, our next meeting for us to look at in which we might just send the letter with the concerns that we are hearing from our citizens, not necessarily us relating those concerns, but uh, sharing some of the concerns that we've heard from citizens and maybe ask them to come down here and have a public um, meeting in which all concerned citizens could come to. Anyway, that I, I agree with Mr. McLawhorn in that we are not in this. It's not something that we can dictate to, but you know, a letter or something to support our citizens, I think would be appropriate. Commissioner Nunley. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, so kind of want to reject out of hand that it's that even if we don't have authority it doesn't mean that it's not our responsibility to hear our constituents concerns it's absolutely our responsibility um and so so is as, as as i think all of us do from time to time we do receive bona fide complaints from citizens especially those that are extremely frustrated and we should help and assist and facilitate address those concerns um and so 
I actually don't have a problem with, with individual commissioners or, or any of us facilitating and helping um, our constituents get these folks to the right place and help them. Don't just pass them off, help them. Um, help them along the way. And if, it, if it's a matter of holding town halls in our districts or doing things as individual representatives, I, I, feel, I feel comfortable with that. I, I don't feel like that's a violation of, of, of the separation of, of our authority. Um, so because we do, have, we do have an absolute responsibility to hear and address these concerns. I, and so I, I don't want to be that, that we're, by not having a public hearing that we're somehow against um, or rejecting the constituents' concerns. I think it's more, are we gonna be about trying to get the market better? Are we gonna be about trying to help those concerns be addressed in a proactive manner as opposed to being a consumer complaint forum? And I, I just think it's more productive if we, if we handle it in the former way. Um, and, and I'll leave it at that. Okay, I'll come back to you. Uh, Commissioner Colson? Well, my, my feelings are that we as a body need to respond to our constituents, and I see no harm in us weighing in on this. Uh, we can send a letter to Josh Stein uh, indicating that we are frustrated because of the complaints that we're receiving, and it has nothing to do with our legal authority as to whether or not we're trying to control it. What we're trying to do is weigh in on it and say, hey, there's a problem. Uh, I don't have any of uh, the other commissioners getting complaints, but I have. I've gotten lots of them, and not just complaints with phone calls. I mean, I'll be at out somewhere, and all of a sudden, this topic of Suddenlink will come up. The thing is, the real shame of it is that when Suddenlink was a local company, it was a great company. It had good service and so on. But now, it, 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 Mary's right. You can you can wait forever trying to get get through to somebody. And when you finally get through their phone tree and you just want to, you know, almost scream at somebody is you find out, well, they say, well, I can't do anything about it. Or you may be wanting to report an outage. And when you report the outage, let's say it's on a Tuesday. Well, we can't get there till Monday of next week. Really? Well, are you going to credit me for the time that I've lost? Try that one. No, they're not going to give you a dime. I mean, I've been through that twice, and I imagine I'm not alone in in, in that same uh, frustration. They're overpriced now, and their service really stinks. And I, I'm not sure what marketplace forces it that uh, Commissioner Nunley is talking about. I see no competition. This is basically a monopoly in this area. Uh, you you can't say Direct TV and things like that are actually comparable they're not uh so anyway i see no harm in us having some letter formed and we express our frustration as a group of commissioners let's say that none of the other towns none of the other counties sent anything out well there'd be no bell ringing would there well you can't hear something unless the bell rings well, why don't we make that bell ring one more time let's send a letter Thank you, uh, uh, Commissioner uh, Tosin. I would like to uh, take a personal privilege here and ask um, uh, Commissioner Nutley suggested something, and I would like to ask our uh, attorney if we could uh, if we could work with uh, Commissioner White and set up a town hall uh, meeting. Uh, her district that she could take the lead on doing a, a town hall meeting uh, in her district, which everybody in the county could, could go and uh, voice their, uh, their opinion or complaints uh, with, uh, you know, at that time. You're asking me I, if that would be allowable? Yes. Um, sure. And, yeah, she, sure. Any commissioner can conduct a town hall in their jurisdiction anytime on any particular issue if they want to hear um, 
from their constituents on a particular matter. So if I'm understanding what you're saying correctly um, and what was suggested by Commissioner Nunnally was that for it not to be action of the board that an individual um, could still, an individual commissioner could still pursue the inquiry, um, facilitate um, assistance to um, their constituents. Um, yes, the answer to your question is yes, that's allowable. And, and then uh, any other commissioner could uh, uh, work along with her, could participate or, uh, and I, I believe that would, uh, would uh, get, because if, when you have the hearing or whatever, we cannot come up with a solution. We, you know, as a, as a board of commissioners, we cannot, you know, we, we don't have, we will not have a solution to the complaints. We will listen to them, but we will not have a, a solution to it. So uh, I, I think this is the better way uh, for the um, citizens and for Commissioner White to be uh, responsive to her constituents and also to any other uh, commissioner, Commissioner Perkins Williams, you know, so uh, in, in any of the rest of us wants to. Commissioner White, are you agreeable? Um, let me put my hand Commissioner on. White. I'm speaking to Commissioner White. Yes, uh, Madam Chair, I'm agreeable to having a town hall. Um, my question is, if I'm able to get my town hall together and I will invite any other commissioner that would like to attend, advertise it, if we're able to get it together before the next meeting and we bring complaints back to the board and I have seeking guidance from Janice Scott and others on a letter, um, is there a chance that this board would support any letter that is generated? Um, well, well, I would, I would, I would not say a letter. Let's have the town hall meeting and see what what comes out of that town hall meeting. With suddenly and as to what the action that they would that they are willing, would be willing to take. Uh, um, I'm still waiting on Commissioner White. Yes, I mean, if, if, if that's, yeah, if, if that's the option, I mean, I, I'll do whatever I can. Yeah, I, w I would like to see that happen. If you agree. Commissioner yes. Perkins Williams, you have something. Commissioner yes. White, you said yes. Uh, Madam Chairman and Commissioner White and the rest of you, we could beat this. We could beat this bush all night and, and knock all the leaves off and won't accomplish anything. This is something I have had. I, I have already established throughout my district uh, town hall meetings, and they are already set. The dates are already there. And I'm worried about getting behind on my dates because they're just waiting for me to do it. And it's a lot of work, Commissioner White, to get that going. We have a survey too in that uh, town hall meeting and they are able to uh, provide information in the chat that my technology person is gonna be able to pull out and we'll be able to put some, compile something and put it together. So I'm a little bit, on that and I just decided that since we were not going to do anything and I didn't want anything to happen to good service if you can get it but I do want the people to have an opportunity to at least express themselves and that's on the agenda and my first one will be for Belvoir and it will be Sunday at three o'clock and they and we're working on sending out the link right now okay as you said Commissioner Perkins we can we can beat this Death until all the leaves fall off. So let's uh, at this point right now, uh, Commissioner White uh, is going to get with uh, um, Madam Attorney and and Commissioner Perkins Williams, and you all will uh, get your town hall meeting schedule as whether it's in your district or Commissioner White's district. You all will work on that. Okay. 
Madam Chairman. Uh, yes, Commissioner uh, Ward. I, w I would just like to say that I think while all of this is going on, that's fine and good. And I'm, I'll, be, I'm, I'll be excited to be able to go to some of those if I have an opportunity. But I still think that coming out of this meeting right now, I think we can certainly send a letter. I've read letters at other towns and counties just to um, the General Assembly or to whoever and let them know our concerns. And our Commissioner, Commissioner Ward, can we go with what we just agreed on? Yes, ma'am. That's fine. Yes. Thank you. We'll move forward, move on with uh, items for decision. The next one is uh, the resolution to dispose of the Bethel ABC property. Uh, commish, uh, Madam Attorney. I'm sorry, I was on mute. Um, on, on January 11th um, this year, the board directed the county manager to proceed with the transfer of, transfer of the Bethel ABC property to the Center for Science, Technology, and Leadership Development Incorporated, which is the private nonprofit. And you all may recall that Dr. Gary Moore came and spoke to the board um, at that meeting. Um, so in order to follow the process, the legal process, um, General Statute 168-267, the county must, at a regular meeting, which is tonight, adopt a resolution authorizing an appropriate county official to dispose of the property by private sale at a negotiated price. If the board does adopt the resolution that's included in your packet tonight, then that resolution needs to be um, published in the newspaper for 10 days. After those 10 days, um, then you can authorize, a, then your resolution will have authorized a county official to execute the transfer of that deed from the county to the nonprofit entity. So if the board wants to continue on the path that we have started, um, you may um, do so by resolution this evening. Commissioner Parkins Williams. I move that we accept the recommendation and move forward. Commissioner Nunley. Second. It's been moved and second that we move forward with the resolution uh, with disposal of the uh, Bethel ABC board property, Madam Clerk. Chairwoman Floyd Huggins? Yes. Vice Chair Fitzpatrick? Yes. Commissioner Albright? Yes. Commissioner Colson? Yes. Commissioner McLawhorn? Yes. Commissioner Nunnally? Yes. Commissioner Ward? Yes. Commissioner White? Yes. Commissioner Perkins Williams? Yes. Motion. Thank you. Then we'll move to the third item. Uh, I believe Tim Coley is going to come up and talk about the roof replacement at Technology Enterprise Center. Yes, uh, good evening, Madam Chair, members of the board. Um, this item is a uh, contract and budget amendment for a new roof, uh, roof replacement at the Technology Enterprise Center uh, on Green Street. Um, it's in uh, great need of repair, and uh, so we put this project out for bid. Uh, we received three bids. Um, the low bidder was Etheridge Roofing, who has uh, actually done work for the county prior, uh, and they do good uh, quality work, so we're uh, pleased to have them as our low bidder. Um, the low bid was $252,364, and that's for the entire roof there. Um, the, the funds uh, for this will come from uh, the Economic Development Commission. These funds were included in, uh, in, the, in their budget uh, and approved uh, in the last two years uh, for this project. Um, so tonight I'm asking for uh, approval and a motion to approve the contract and the budget amendment with Esther Roofing for $252,364. Thank you. I understand the motion. I don't see any head. Commissioner Ward? I so move. Second. It needs to be moved and second. Uh, Madam Clerk? Chairwoman Floyd Huggins? Yes. Vice Chair Fitzpatrick? Yes. Commissioner Albright? Yes. Commissioner Colson? Yes. Commissioner McLawhorn? Yes. Commissioner Nunnally? Yes. Commissioner Ward? Yes. Commissioner White? Yes. Commissioner Perkins Williams? Yes. Motion passes unanimously. Thank you. 
We'll now move to the fourth item, appointment to the five district commission board. Mr. Manager. Yes, Madam Chairman, your recommendation to appoint Andrew Reynolds from Fountain Rural Fire District and Herman Pegram from Sharp Point Fire to the Fire District Commission Board. Um, Commissioner Ward. I move to accept the recommendations to appoint Mr. Reynolds and Mr. Pegram. Okay, Commissioner Perkins Williams. I second. Okay, it's been moved and second that we appoint the names presented. Madam Clerk. Chairwoman Floyd Huggins. Yes. Vice Chair Fitzpatrick. Yes. Commissioner Albright. Yes. Commissioner Colson. Yes. Commissioner McLawhorn. Yes. Commissioner Ward. Yes. Commissioner White. Yes. Commissioner Perkins Williams. Yes. Motion passes unanimously. Thank you. Well, then I move to the appointment to the local firemen's relief fund board. Mr. Manager. Yes, Madam Chairwoman, you have a recommendation to appoint Kathy Parker to the seat. Uh, Madam, I mean, uh, Commissioner Perkins Williams. Motion to set the recommendation. Commissioner Ward. Second the motion. It's been moved and second that we appoint uh, the person named. Madam Clerk. Chairwoman Floyd Huggins. Yes. Vice Chair Fitzpatrick. Yes. Commissioner Albright. Yes. Commissioner Colson. Yes. Commissioner McLawhorn. Yes. Commissioner Nunnally. Yes. Commissioner Ward. Yes. Commissioner White. Yes. Commissioner Perkins Williams. Yes. Motion passes unanimously. Thank you. Item six. To appointment and reappointment to the Biden Medical Center Board of Trustees. Mr. Manager. Yes, Madam Chairwoman, your recommendation from the Biden Medical Center Board of Trustees from their nominating committee, they're recommending Mr. Christopher Jenkins be appointed in the reappointment of Vice Chairman Mike Fitzpatrick. Motion to approve, Madam Chair. Uh, Madam Commissioner Ward. Um, has that motion been made? Yes. Okay, well, I'll second it. Okay. It's been moved and second that we uh, reappoint Christopher Jenkins and Commissioner Fitzpatrick. Madam Clerk. Chairwoman Floyd Huggins. Yes. Vice Chair Fitzpatrick. Yes. Commissioner Albright. Yes. Commissioner Colson. Yes. Commissioner McLawhorn. Yes. Commissioner Nunnally. Yes. Commissioner Ward. Yes. Commissioner White. Yes. Commissioner Perkins Williams. Yes. Motion passes unanimously. Thank you. Uh, we are now down to uh, where are we? Closed session. Is that where we are? Yes, it, yes, has, been, it has been suggested that this board go into closed session. Pursuant to North Carolina General Statute 143318.11A4 to discuss matters relating to the location or expansion of industries or other businesses in the area served by the public body. Also under 143318.11A1 to prevent the disclosure of confidential information. On that basis, uh, Madam Chair, you would need a motion and second to go into closed session. Commissioner Nunley. Yes, Madam Chair, move that we uh, move to closed session. Commissioner Perkins Williams. I second. Okay, it's been moved and second. Madam Clerk. Chairwoman Floyd Huggins. Yes. Vice Chair Fitzpatrick. Yes. Commissioner Albright. Yes. Commissioner Colson. Yes. Commissioner McLawhorn. Yes. Commissioner Nunnally. Yes. Commissioner Ward. Yes. Commissioner White. Yes. Commissioner Perkins Williams. Yes. Motion passes unanimously. Thank you. Thank you. We are back in open session. Um, Commissioner White. I would like to make a motion to approve the closed session minutes from our December 21st oh, meeting.
Can I have a second? Commissioner Ward? I'll second the motion. That's been moved and seconded. We approved the closed session minutes of December uh, 21st, I believe. Madam Clerk? Chairwoman Foy Huggins? Yes. Vice Chair Fitzpatrick? Yes. Commissioner Colson? Yes. Commissioner Albright? Yes. Commissioner McLawhorn? We gave a thumbs up. Commissioner Nunnally? Yes. Commissioner Ward? Yes. Commissioner White? Yes. Commissioner Perkins Williams? Yes. Motion passes unanimously. All right, thank you. We're down to um, commissioners' comments at this time or reports. And I want to remind you, I think the manager sent out an email uh, text today saying that we're going to move commissioner comments up before closed session. Um, so that yeah, going going forth on next meeting next, and so forth. Next meeting. Yeah. Okay. Um, Commissioner Colson. I'm oh, sorry, hit the wrong button. I have no comments. All right. No, no comment. Thank you. Bergen Williams. Oh, I have comments. Uh, I don't know how many. Uh, on Sunday, February the 7th at 3 o'clock, um residents in the Belvoir Township will be invited to a meeting, town hall meeting. And you will get the, you should see it in the paper and you will get the link for the virtual setting. It is a virtual meeting. Thank you. Commissioner, oh, did you rearrange the name, Commissioner Ward? Yes, you did. <laughs> What? I, I have no comments. Okay. Did I call Albright already? Y'all switched yes, the order. I have no comment again. Thank you. Okay. Y'all switched the order on me. I was going. Okay. okay. Uh, McLaughlin? You already got him. Oh, okay. All right. Did I get everybody? Uh, <laughs> Um, you didn't get me, but I don't oh. have comments anyway. So okay, and all did right. You get Commissioner Fitzpatrick. Fitzpatrick. I would just make a motion to adjourn. <laughs> okay. I second that. that. That's not what I was going to. Yeah, I was calling in the order that I was looking at it on on stream, and then when when you kept moving the, the names, then I lost where I was in, in calling. So I apologize for not calling you. Um, Right. <clears throat> okay, I think I heard a motion to adjourn. Uh, uh, Second. Okay. Um, Madam Clerk. Chairwoman Floyd Huggins. Yes. Vice Chair Fitzpatrick. Yes. Commissioner Albright. Yes. Commissioner Colson. Yes. Commissioner McLawhorn. Thumbs up. Commissioner Nunnally. Yes. Commissioner Ward. Yes. Commissioner White? Yes. Commissioner Perkins Williams? Yes. Motion passes unanimously. Good night.